Welcome to another Get Ready With Me. Last week I did not do this. I did a roundup for Mob Beauty. But this week I just wanted to get back to it. And I'm gonna just talk about stuff that happened this week. Put on a full face of Clean Beauty and go from this to this. But first, let's get back into the beginning of the video and put some makeup on that face. Let's get going. There is a pool party happening outside. So that's good timing. So the RMS Supernatural Radiance Serum, this stuff, I'm not sold but I wanna use it up. I like it. It's grown on me, I'm not gonna lie to you. I just know if I were to put the quarter of a teaspoon, I believe it is, for the appropriate amount of protection from the sun on the face, I would look like a grease slick. Not cute. I love using this with a lighter foundation, so I'm actually gonna use it with the Mod Beauty foundation that I just talked about here, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm putting a little bit of a drop of lightweight oil. By the way, I think an oil that you could use for this that would work really well, that's not that expensive, is the Coco Kind Chia Seed Oil. I don't love it as a facial oil. Look at this, look at this stuff, hello. Hey, hey, hi. Just because sometimes it just, it's too watery for me for a facial oil. It just, I don't feel like it does much for me. I like it as a mixer, so you can use it as a mixer. If you'll notice, my skin today, I have a couple of spots, which is just happening because I got myself back into that Kosas foundation, the liquid foundation, which I really liked, but it broke my face out. And there's something in there that just does not agree with my face. So that doesn't mean it's gonna happen for you at all. It's a beautiful foundation. I just I just wish I could use it without breaking out. Speaking of foundationies, so I finally posted the full scorecard review of the Ritual Defeat foundation, the three drop foundation, which I've now gotten down to two drops and been just fine, so FYI. That is now live on the site. I've been liking it, I've been using it. I sometimes really long for something that has a little bit more moisture to it, creaminess to it. That's just me, that's what I respond well to. By the way, sorry, I'm like ADDing right now. I used the dry bar hair dryer on my hair and it is like stick straight, dry kind of floof. It's driving me nuts. Cause I wanted to show you the difference between that, the Conair one that I have, which is El Cheapo, but like fantastic performance and the Dyson. So I'm working on it. I just, this is, oh, it just, flops and floats and it's, oh, you know what I mean? You know when like, when you get to have those good hair days and then you go backwards, it's really not the worst problem a person could have. I like the RDF foundation. I think there's really nothing else like it out there. And I think it performs really well. It leaves a little, very, very little bit of texture on top of the skin. It's just not something I've been reaching towards for, not towards, so that, you know, that's how one of the ways I determine a favorite. So yeah, so it might not be on the faves, but that doesn't mean it's not a strong performer. So there you go. This was nice. This muted the shine from the RMS really nicely. I actually am liking this combination quite a bit. It's the first time I've tried it. I think it's the first time I've tried it. I honestly don't really know. Somebody did ask me, by the way, about PYT is closing, which I didn't know that. Why you gotta close, man? Can't you keep the only one with the shade of brow pencil that I really like? It's not even the brow pencil, it's the shade. So what do you use instead? I have been leaning on Eco Brow. Is it perfect? No. Does it last for a while? Yes. So far, I've liked the shade Liz. It's a little dark. Granted, I have dark hair, so you would think it would be fine, but sometimes I don't like too dark, too severe of brows. Brows are like super personal. I have had this for a very long time and it still has plenty of product left in it. The new one that I bought and I purchased these is Sharon. This is a light brunette shade. It's a little warm. Liz is working pretty well. It's still not the PYT toe. I'm still looking for the PYT Taupe. Plume is really good. They're ashy, I wanna say ashy daybreak. I can't remember certain things that I learned in history class and yet I can remember the colors of the products that I've tried. That's, I don't know what that, that's sad. I get it, but it's true. I'm also testing out still the RDF concealer. I have this in shade Ceres, 
series, whatever, we're gonna go with it. So as I continue to test, I'm finding the brush to be a better option here and the under eye area has to be hydrated or else this feels too dry on me, which means those who have oily under eye, this could be really great for you and you like a pot concealer. I find that I fuss more with a pot concealer than I do most of the time a doe foot or liquid concealer. So I don't know what that is, but yeah, this is good. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not quite sure yet. Coverage, as you can see between the two, it's nice. It's a good, strong coverage. There's some brightening. You can bring it under the eye and press it in. I'm trying to remind myself, I take notes separately. So I'm like, did I say that it showed texture here? No, but I had some good oily base happening underneath and that seems to help here. I'm just leaning towards the oil. <laughs> The older I get, the more oil I lean towards. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of the RMS. It is not as oily, so you're not gonna get that sheen and shine under the eye, which is an advantage, I think, in certain ways, because I can't stand the shine you get with some concealers. I think I can safely say that I like this better than the RMS Uncover Up, which is saying something, because I used to use that as spot treatment, and this is pretty good on spots. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I mean, what is perfect? It also feels dry at first, but it does work with the warmth of your finger. Maybe that's why the brush can be tricky, but I don't know. It's like, again, it's just fussier for me. I don't know what it is about pot concealers. It's just a little bit fussier of an application. It's good. It's really good. You're just not getting any wows from me, but I'm still going to keep testing and I will do a scorecard for this because when I get like this, I can't make up my mind. So I need to have it all written out. That's why they started actually, because I needed that. I was losing my mind with all the reviews. Normally I would say I would have to set it. But yeah, I got to set it. We're just going to use our finger and some 14E powder and a finger. That's all I need. Done and done. Everybody says to apply it with a brush. I'm over here doing that because it works for me and my skin. Okay, so I'm finishing this book called The Comfort Crisis and I'm also trying the RMS Eye Brights Aurora. It's purple. It's lavender. I had, to get it. I had to get it. Sometimes makeup is fun and most of the time makeup should be fun and this feels fun. So we're going to apply this. This is not the first time I've tried it, but man, is it is it fun? Look at this. Hey, wow. Oh, we're just gonna do finger painting. Don't be scared. So cool. Anyway, I'm reading this book. I'm slowly but surely getting through it. I've taken a while. I like it. A lot of people really loved it. After breath, I wanted to read something like this. I'm kind of on that tangent of wellness, but not toxic wellness, you know what I mean? So I'm just learning and having fun with it, not reading the books that are like, never eat sugar or blah, blah, blah. So I get The Comfort Crisis and it's in a nutshell, it's like Cliff's Notes, but Britt's Notes. This guy is talking about, he goes on this expedition and it's in Alaska, I wanna say. It's really off the grid. He is writing all about this experience and yes, hunting is involved, which I'm not, a, I'm not into that. I don't, not the animals. Mm -mm. However, I got past that and so he's talking all about this experience and relating it back to where we are as humans in the industrial age, in the modern industrial age, whatever, and how we all know that we don't move. We're basically turning into the movie WALL-E, but it's not, it's not one of those like, oh great, okay, now this is okay, existential crisis after existential crisis. He's giving some interesting information, so I like the way that he's presenting it, and one of the things that I was just reading about, this is the bronzer, by the way, from Ilya. He's talking about noise and how adjusted or maladjusted we've become to not having any peace and quiet. And I was reading all about this one section, and I was like, yep, yep, yes, yep. The place that I was living in in Sacramento, so I was in San Francisco for six years almost, and then decided to go to Sacramento. No offense, Sacramento, but I was there right when the pandemic hit next to the Capitol. I was ne decided to go next to the Capitol. Mayhem, craziness, riots, protests. A lot of us in the States, I know, experience it around the world. So yada, yada, yada. One of the main reasons that I got in my car and was bold enough to say, yeah, I will drive with my Siamese cat 3,000 miles across the country is because of the noise. It was so noisy and I've lived in major cities. I like to be city adjacent for this actually, if I can. I like to not share a wall with another person in an apartment building if I can, 
but the effect that that can have on your nervous system, they were talking about a study in there that mentioned the rates of anxiety and depression. This is, you're gonna go, yeah, I know, obviously. The rates of anxiety and depression when the decibel levels were a certain point, mostly in urban areas, were just significantly higher in those areas as opposed to more rural areas. So I'm reading this and it's just checking all the boxes and sometimes when I miss going and being near a city, I mean, Nashville's got a lot to it right now, I will say, it's pretty great. It's, it's a little crazy, it's like Nash Vegas, but when I'm near a city like Chicago or Boston or New York, or New York is definitely frenetic and I was just there, I love coming back here and I find that I just sit and biologically it's doing stuff to our bodies and our minds. I was liking that part of the book so far. I'm almost through it. I'm not sure I would recommend it as a Brit's pick for books necessarily, but it's interesting. You can check it out. Comfort Crisis. I think it'll be interesting to see how long this purple lasts. By the way, that was the Ma Beauty Cake Liner, which I absolutely love. Especially like it because you can kind of smudge it into the purple and it doesn't look too different next to it. I don't know. The other thing that I wanted to tell you about, and this is not makeup related, same Ilia bronzer. I want a strong bronze with this purple. One of my favorite combos, by the way, sorry, I just distracted myself, is a warm, almost apricot infused bronze with this type of a lavender. I don't know what that is. Maybe I went to a birthday party when I was 10 and it just was a positive memory that's stuck. One of the reasons I like lavender, by the way, is because, I don't know, I had to be maybe eight or nine. My mom pulled together a birthday party and she made, she's freaking awesome by the way. My mother is amazing. I don't know how she did it. I really don't. Appreciation post for Judy. But she did such a cool birthday party and it was really creative. It was a lot of her doing it. So she did like paint stations and stuff. We had a pool party and she made these chocolates and there were white chocolate hearts and there were some that were pink, there were some that were cream colored. I can remember them and I have a feeling right now, it's so cool. It's a core memory for sure. So some were cream and then she made lavender hearts. And I think lavender was more of a theme. So a lot of the streamers or balloons, it wasn't like a huge party, but it made such an imprint on me and I would sit in the kitchen and watch her make the chocolates, which are not, easy to make. She had chocolate molds and stuff. Like who has time for this, Judy? Amazing. I don't know how she did it. I really don't. Very lucky. I know that I'm lucky. I don't mean to trigger anybody either discussing mother-daughter stuff. I know that that can be a thing and I want to be respectful of that, but I just also, it's just flying out of, into my head, out of my mouth here. So that's why lavender is one of my favorite colors. Thanks mom. And the other thing that I've been trying lately, I don't know if I've mentioned this already too, is uh, breakfast. I always get bored of breakfasts. Tough problem. I have been doing yogurt, Greek yogurt, low fat Greek yogurt. I use the Faye yogurt, I like it. I don't know, some people don't like it. I add this blueberry compote, so I get a big thing of frozen wild blueberries because I'm trying to get more blueberries into my system. Anything antioxidant into the system, color, all of that. And I have this blueberry compote recipe, and yes, there is simple sugar in it. I don't put the full amount in there, and sometimes I'll just use honey on top of the yogurt just to sweeten it. It takes 10 minutes to make this homemade compote. There's no fillers, there's no gums, there's no nothing. It's blueberries, sugar, water, lemon juice. You done. And I have been ladling that basically on top of my yogurt in the morning. And then I do shaved the almonds, you know, like the, not the slivered, but the shaved almonds on top for crunch. So good, I wanna give you the recipe. If you like a yogurt situation, if you can tolerate dairy, or if you can't, I think with coconut yogurt, it'd be like divine. It's really a good summer breakfast. I'm very into it. And you get a ton of protein in that yogurt. And yeah, sure, you could try it with cottage cheese. Huge fan of cottage cheese as well. Dairy, 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 dairy. I moved away from that for a while and then I got back in to dairy. I just don't like to overdo the dairy, but it's nice to have in the morning. I feel like it's also, somehow appetizing to me. If not, then I don't really want like a big thing of eggs. I will put the compote recipe compote, in the description. This is the Air Perez Avocado Waterproof Mascara. 
really lovely not as glam as I would like for volume but if you like a soft mascara and you cry a lot no I'm just kidding and you're sweating or something and you just you want to make sure that you're having a waterproof moment I'm finding this to be a solid option again it's a little flimsy for me with volume so I'm going over it with the Calare. Calare is not my absolute favorite but it's pretty pretty solid when it comes to mascaras in this realm and then I try to take this off in the shower or else I'm tugging too much with a washcloth and I'm really not worried about waterproof or else I wouldn't be doing this. Something fun is from Kimiko Kimiko? Kimiko? This is called the Brow Sensei. They sent, they generously gifted this. They sent a brow pencil. I was under no obligation to feature it here, but I have been trying different things to hold the brows in place. And I'm liking this. I have to get into a full test. I just started today. I also have one from Eco Brow, so I'll test them against each other. You guys know I like to battle stuff. But so far, so good. I think it's pretty pretty decent. More to come on that. The other product that I am about to post a scorecard for is the Gen C Lip Mask. So this is the next thing I want to talk to you about. The Gen C Lip Mask, $28, and it has a pale pink hue, which I'm not sure if that will read. I think it is. I think you can see it. Look, look where'd my mouth go? I don't know. For me, this just is a washout and I don't like the pink hue. Beyond that, looking beyond that, it's a silkier lip mask. It can be used as a multitasker. It's a balm during the day. They mentioned that it can be used as a primer underneath lipstick and that it can be used as a mask overnight. Here's my take on it. If it weren't for the hue, I would give it a little bit more of a moment. I like the texture. I apply it as a balm throughout the day and I naturally want to put something on top of it because I look like I'm frozen to death at this point. But the feel of it is lightweight enough. It just doesn't hold for me. It doesn't last for me. And then I'm comparing this to one of my top 20 favorites, which is the Alpine Lip Mask, which I've talked about over here before. That is rich, dense, very moisturizing, almost adheres to the lip, but it's not tacky. It has a velvety vibe. It's pretty, that's why I love it. So it's this really dense and rich situation that you don't need a lot to put onto the lip. You get a lot of hydration. That's one of the only ones where I wake up the next day, my lips still feel hydrated. I unfortunately did not see that with this lip mask. However, I really like using it as a primer. It's unnecessary in my routine. I don't need a lip primer. That's just not the way it is. I don't think it's realistic for me even though that's the way I would want to use it. This is the Air Perez in Grace. But if you like that kind of thing, then try it. I don't know, check it out. I just, I, it's not my favorite from the line. This one isn't that strong of a color either, but I did so much on the eye that I didn't want to overdo the lip. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Now I'm just playing. Tower 28, Rush Hour. Wish they would not have this in that new plastic. Thank you. I feel like I've had a couple of interesting tests lately. I have a lot in front of me, the move is coming up sooner than later, so I'm getting ready for that. I finally feel like I'm in a place where I know where I'm gonna go next. It's gonna be local, so I'm staying in the area. I mean, this is a wild one. I think by next time I should talk about, just this was, this was different. This just hit different for sure. I usually know exactly where I wanna go and I didn't this time, so it was like this lesson and exercise in sort of trusting my gut, which normally I would say I do, but I guess I lost a little bit of that. I don't know. And I have a health update I wanna give you, so I will put that into the mix next week. For now, just know that I will be moving soon, and you'll probably see a different background. Figuring out new lighting in a new space is always so fun. I love sitting here, putting makeup on my face and chatting with you. Hope you had fun with this one. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already. I will be testing out Odyssey Tay's Mineral Drops. There's so many, there's like a lot in front of me. The RDF Concealer, if there's any other products or questions that you have about anything that I've applied today, please let me know in the comments. I love hearing from you. And sometimes I make those into videos. If I answer you, I can answer everybody. Thank you so much again for joining me. I will see you right back here real soon. Until then.